In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of how to find um, antiderivatives using u substitution. But instead of doing indefinite intervals, we're going to deal with a definite interval. And we already know how to determine how to evaluate a definite integral. We use the fundamental theorem of calculus, which says if I'm going to find the definite integral from a to b of little f dx, I find the antiderivative to get the original function back. I evaluate it at the upper bound minus evaluate it at the lower bound. So we've already been there. We've done that. We know how to do that. There are two methods to do this, and you have to be familiar with both methods. So make sure that you understand and can follow both of these. Method number one is we're going to keep everything in terms of x, or we're going to evaluate the definite integral in terms of x. We're still going to use the u substitution, but our uh, evaluating of the definite integral will be in terms of x. I think you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So we're going to start the problem as we've done before. We're going to let u equal to the inside function of x squared plus 1. du is equal to 2x dx. You can look at the original problem and see that I do not need that 2, so I'm going to divide it over to the other side. I'm going to rewrite the integral, but watch carefully. I am not writing any bounds, no lower bound and no upper bound, and I'll tell you why in just a second. So in place of x squared plus 1, I'm going to substitute u, so I get u cubed. And in place of x dx, I'm going to substitute 1 half du. So notice now that my problem is in terms of u, and I do not have a lower bound, and I do not have an upper bound, because these two numbers are x values. They're not u values. So I cannot write them on this expression that is in terms of u. They are x numbers, and they are not u numbers. So I'm going to do an indefinite integral, so I get 1 half of u to the fourth over 4. I did an antiderivative, which will give me u to the fourth over 8, technically plus c, but I don't really have to worry about the plus c right now because, I'm, because I am going to evaluate the definite integral. All right, so basically this was my work to get back in terms of x. So I'm going to substitute what u is equal to, in this problem u is equal to x squared plus 1, so I get x squared plus 1 to the fourth power over 8. Now I'm going to deal with the definite integral from, I take my x lower bound and my x upper bound. See, I'm back in terms of x, so I can put those x values onto the function. Evaluate the upper bound, that'll give me 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 to the 4th is 16, and 16 divided by 8 is 2. Put in the lower bound, I get uh, 0 plus 1 is 1 to the 4th is 1, minus 1 eighth. So that gives me 16 over 8 minus 1 over 8, which is 15 over 8 is the value of the definite integral. So everything in the highlighted region, all of that, was in terms, I was dealing in terms of u. And I used that information to go back in terms of x. All right, the second method is fairly similar. The only thing is that we're not going to go back in terms of x. So take a look. Starting the same way, I'm going to let u equal to the inside function of x squared plus 1. du is still 2x dx, and I still don't need the 2. I'm still going to do the substitution, so I'll have a 1 half out front, a du in the back, and uh, u to the third power. But notice what's different. Since I'm not going back in terms of x, I'm going to need a lower bound and an upper bound, but the lower bound and the upper bound have to be in terms of u. So I'm going to take this x value, okay, it's an x value, make sure you understand that, and I'm going to change it into a u value by substituting in for what u is equal to. So 0 squared is 0 plus 1 is 1. So what was a 0 as an x value is a 1 as a u value. 
and I'm going to do the same thing with the upper bound. I'm going to take this x value, and I'm going to change it into a u value by substituting, and that gives me a 2. I'm going to um, find the antiderivative, just like I did before, so I get u to the 4th over 4 from 1 to 2, which is u to the 4th over 8 from 1 to 2, and then I'm going to input my upper bound, so I get 16 over 8 minus 1 over 8 is 15 over 8, and voila, notice I get exactly the same answer. Now, in my mind, the second method that I just completed is a little easier and a little less tedious than the first method, but make sure that you're familiar with both. There are times where the first method may, may be more convenient or more accessible than the second method. Um, there's also, in your packet, there is a page where I have worked out these problems with um, annotated notes for you to follow if, if you can, uh, if it helps you to see it visually versus um, hearing it. All right, let's take a look at the second problem. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to let u, get a pen here, u is equal to the inside function of 2x minus 1 du is equal to 2 dx. I do not need the 2, so I get du over 2 equal to dx. I'm going to do this problem in terms of x, so I'll have my 1 half out front. The integration of, um, in place, ah, okay, this is a, looks like a stubborn x problem. I can't remember if we've done one of those yet or not, but if not, that's a good thing. So notice that in place of 2x minus 1, I can substitute a u. So I can have u to the 1 half power, but I still have an x, and I, I have a substitution for dx. dx is equal to du over 2. So I have the 1 half out front, and I have the du in the back, but I still have that x that's hanging on. So what in the world am I going to do with what I'm going to call the stubborn x? In other words, it doesn't go away simply you have to do a little bit more work. Well, the key to your success is sitting right here. I know that u is equal to 2x minus 1, so I can solve that equation for x, and I'll have a u replacement. So that would be u plus 1 over 2. No, seems a little crazy. So I'm going to substitute u plus 1 over 2 in place of x. When I do, I'm going to take the over 2 in the denominator. I'm going to move it out front, so I'll have a 1 half that was already there and a 1 half that's coming from here. Get that out of my way and make that u plus 1 over u to the 1 half du. That's the same thing as 1 fourth. Simplifying that, u over u to the 1 half is u to the 1 half plus u to the negative 1 half du. Notice I have not put any bounds because the original bounds were x values. So I'll have 1 fourth, find the antiderivative, u to the 3 halves, 2 thirds, find the antiderivative, u to the 1 half, 2. I sh technically should put a plus c, but remember the whole, the whole purpose of that was to evaluate a definite interval. So I'm going to have my 1 fourth out front. I'm going to put the value of u, 2x minus 1, back in its place. So 2 times 2x minus 1 to the 3 halves power over 3 minus 2 times 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power evaluated from... 1 to 5. Okay, let's see what we end up with here. Hold your breath. So I'm going to substitute the 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Cubed is 27. Times 2 is 54 over 3. Minus, put in the 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Minus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 um, is 3 times 2 is 6. Minus lower bound. Oh, this is fun. 
Um, lower bound, 2 minus 1, so 1 to the 3 halves, so that gives me 2 thirds. Substitu I was substituting in the 5. I'm sorry, 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 substituting in the 1. Uh, substituting the 1 into the second term, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 minus 2. So that's 1 fourth of 54 thirds minus 2 thirds is 52 thirds. And then negative 6 minus negative 2 is negative 4. And that's 1 fourth of 52 thirds minus 12 thirds is 1 fourth of uh, 52 take away 12 is 40. What am I doing here? 40 over 3, which gives me 10 thirds. If I did my arithmetic correctly, that is no way guaranteed, but I'm getting ready to do this problem again in terms of u, and hopefully I'll get the same answer. All right, so let's go in terms of u. The beginning work, all the initial work is the same. u is equal to 2x minus 1. du is equal to 2dx. Don't need the 2. du over 2 is equal to dx. I still have, a st have that stubborn x, so x is equal to u plus 1 over 2. Um, the antiderivative, 1 half out front um, from, well, let's do the substitution first. Another 1 half out front from here. Let's clean this up a little bit. I don't like that. So we have the 1 half from the du over 2, du in the back, u to the 1 half, replacing the stubborn x, so I have a 1 half out front and a u plus 1, so that gives me 1 fourth. Now this time I'm going to put bounds on, I'm going to put 5, 5 times 2 is 10 minus 1 is 9, so the upper bound, the 5 becomes a 9, subbing in the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1, from 1 to 9. Antiderivative uh, u to the 1 half plus u to the negative 1 half du from 1 to 9. That's 1 fourth of u to the 3 halves, 2 thirds, I'm finding the antiderivative, plus u to the 1 half times 2, finding the antiderivative of the second term from 1 to 9. Now we're going to substitute, so that's 1 fourth of, subbing in the 9, uh, the square root of 9 is, square root of 9 is 3, cubed is 27, times 2 is 54, so that gives me 54 over 3, just like I had before, plus the square root of 9 is 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 thirds, substituting in the 1, and substituting in the 1. So that gives me 1 fourth of 52 thirds, 6 minus 2, is, wait, why do I have a minus 6 from the last one? Um, 6 minus 2 is 4. I see my mistake. Uh, I see the mistake that I made. This notice here I had a minus 4, and here I had a minus 6. The reason is, see my integration right here? I had a plus 2 u to the 1 half. And when I um, copied it down, I made it a minus. So there, so my answers are not going to agree because I made uh, a, I made a copy error in the sign. Uh, but I think you can see that doing this in terms of u um, is a little easier and has a few less places. Like right there, I didn't have to I didn't have to copy back in terms of x and risk that possible 
uh, copy error. All right, so this is um, evaluating definite integrals with u substitution. The big idea is if you're going to stay in terms of u, you have to change your bounds from x numbers into u numbers. Uh, and again, pay attention to the mistake that I made here in uh, the first part that's going to throw everything off. So 